Hello, everyone. I'm John Vinsel. I'm a program manager lead at Microsoft. I work on the MSIX team, and today I'm here to talk to you about application security and deployment. First, let's look at some of the challenges we have today with software distribution. One of the things is there's no mandatory code signing required for applications. Also, many apps need to run as administrator and are not isolated on the device. This results in users worrying about installing applications and must run antivirus or malware detection on their devices. So with Windows 10X, we tried to bring balance. Instead of uh, going for an extremely locked down policy, we're trying to bring some level of security combined with application compatibility. And we do this through a couple of different ways. First off, we allow Microsoft apps and UWP apps to run in a host and all other apps to run into a container, making sure that we have the fidelity of apps running on the system um, and give you that application compatibility. Uh, by doing so, we don't run any AV uh, on the product because we run in what we call a signed and reputable mode. So how does the signed and reputable application con execution control work? We do this with what we call the circle of trust. The circle of trust starts with the baseline that we used in Windows 10 and S mode. Uh, we build upon that by running any signed code that trusts up to certificates on Windows. And then lastly, we leverage the intelligent security graph uh, for reputation of apps. This is the same graph that powers Windows Defender AV and Smart Screen uh, for app reputation. So how do you go and build reputation for your apps? Well, first off, we say don't rely on reputation for your app. You should code sign all your app that runs on the system. Likewise, migrating to MSIX will make it easier for you to code sign your apps. For anything else, you can actually go and submit your app for analysis. But the best way is to increase your app's prevalence and adoption um, and then it'll be known through the intelligent security graph. So let's talk a little bit more about MSIX. MSIX is designed to reuse your existing assets. Uh, we're here to provide integrity and reliability for your applications. So bringing a better installation model to your app for Windows. We really just want to simplify the application deployment and ensure that you have a model that makes it easy to keep your apps always up to date. So MSIX isn't just a different deployment technology. It's really growing upon our existing installer technologies. Things like ClickOne's Windows Application Virtualization or MSI. We went back to the fundamentals of those and learned about all the things that customers liked and likewise looked, looked at the things that customers didn't like and then evolved this into a modern deployment technology, which is MSIX. So let's go over some of the top level benefits that is MSIX. Uh, first off, it's just a simplified packaging and deployment technology. We've moved to a declarative model where everything you need to know about the installation is defined in a manifest file, which allows Windows to kind of control the installation. Uh, we also implemented a, a formal identity and versioning system uh, to make it really easy to identify what an app is and the lineage of the app for app updates. As I said, the Windows OS will go and manage the lifecycle of the app. We install it, we update it, we remove it without the need for custom installers to go and do that. All the apps are installed per user, uh, allowing you know, the app only to be seen by the users that need it. And then we formalize the app data state. So it allows the app data to be redirected to the user's app data folder um, and prevent it from being kind of stored all over the Windows operating system. Um, and the last thing we do is we bring integrity to the app. We offer levels of tamper protection on the application uh, so that if the app files have been changed, we can prevent the app from running and exposing the users to any kind of vulnerabilities that might be out there. Um, likewise, for enterprises, we also give them the ability to limit the sources the apps are coming from. So if they don't want certain apps on their devices, they can go and uh, limit those installations. So let's take a look at the uh, MSX file and what's contained in an MSIX file. Uh, so first off, everything's self-contained in the MSIX package. Uh, it's kind of composed of two parts, the package payload and the footprint files. The package payload is everything that is your application. It's your XE, it's your DLLs, it's your content, it's everything you as a developer build. The footprint files are the things that we need to drive the lifecycle management of the application. So if we kind of dive deeper into that, uh, first off, we have the manifest file. And again, that has my identity, that drives uh, all the installation parameters that I need, it sets my file type associations and things like that. Uh, there's the app signature. That's what we use to know that the app is trusted by something uh, in the trusted root certification authority on the device, making sure that it's just not a random app being installed and it has some level of trust. Um, and then lastly, we have the block map. And that allows us to go and verify the files that are being installed on the system. 
The block map contains a hash of all your payload files so that when we're deploying the app on the system, we can validate the, app, the files being put on the system are the ones actually the developer intended. Um, and then lastly, again, the, the manifest allows us to kind of manage the removal and the updates of the applications. So let's take a quick look at an app manifest file here. Um, and I'm going to call out a few key elements uh, that we use that will help us build the identity out and understand the targeting of the app to Windows. Uh, first off, there's the version of your app. Um, and then there's the publisher. What's unique about the publisher is uh, the publisher here actually identifies uh, the subject name of your signing certificate. We use this for uniqueness of your app. And I'll talk a little bit more about the identity on the next slide. Uh, but the, the, the subject name of your cert is a key component for the lineage of your application. Um, we also have the name of your app, which in this case would be like the Photos app, something that the user would go and see. Um, and then lastly, if you want to target specific architectures, we give you the ability to target specific architectures or specific versions of Windows. So let's dive a little bit into this package identity and what it really means. Uh, the package identity uh, has two components. The first part we'll talk about is the package family name. And this is composed of the name of your package combined with a hash of that publisher. Now, again, that publisher is the subject name of your signing cert, which gives us a bit of uniqueness. So taking that and hashing it and combining it with your package name gives us a unique identity on the system for your application. And this is the lineage of your application. So no matter what version you're being deployed, the family name stays consistent. Now, we know for uh, developers or even users alike, they want to know a little bit more information about what might be on their device, making sure they're at the latest and greatest application. And that's where the package full name comes into play. It takes the package name combined with the version, the architecture, and again, the hash of that publisher name. And that defines the exact version of the application installed on the device. Uh, so as you're going from version to version, uh, the lineage of those packages tied to the package family name will just take care of the updates for you. And when you want to see the version that's installed on your device, that's where the package full name comes into play. So when we think about distributing applications on uh, Windows 10X, there really is no limits to how you can distribute. We have the ability for you to easily distribute through the Microsoft Store, or you can distribute from any server or location to your Windows 10X dual screen device. Likewise, you can use that same application package and target any other Windows edition, whether it be home, pro, education, enterprise, et cetera. There really is no limit in using MSIX in your distribution methods. So let's go and recap some of the benefits that are MSIX. Uh, we like to think when we're installing MSIX that the user has a feeling of never regretting installing an app. And it starts with a predictable, safe, and reliable deployment. Uh, we also offer a really clean uninstall. You don't have to build a custom uninstaller because through the manifest and the lightweight container, we can easily clean up the application that was installed. We do things to optimize the disk space uh, for the user. So whether it's a uh, multiple packages sharing a file, or multiple users installing the same app, we only ever store a file on disk one time. We also give developers the ability to build resource packages. Resource packages allow you to compartmentalize either language parts of your code or scale resources part of your code. When you put those into an MSIX bundle package and the user installs it, they'll only pull down the resources that are applicable. So you can offer a wide range of languages but then when the user installs it, they only get the languages that are applicable to their device and not have to have extra footprint um, and space being taken up. And then lastly, we offer network optimizations. Uh, when we're doing application updates, I talked about that block map that's the hash of all the files. We do a comparison of the existing block map to the new block map, and we only download the differences between those two block maps. And we do the differences within a file level at a 64K block level. So you're not downloading the entire package or even the full files. You're just downloading the differences to the user. And we also only download files that are needed. So if a file is already on the disk, we'll never download that again. So as we kind of go and look at updates, you know, Windows controls the life cycle of those updates. All the updates are just based on that application family, that package family name I talked about a couple slides ago. Uh, you don't have to do anything else. It's just built into the platform for you. Um, only the changes are downloaded. And what's really cool is if a user is using the app, we can actually download the file changes without having the user shut down the app. And then the next time they shut down the app, we can finish the update to the newer version of the app for them.
So let's kind of walk through a scenario and just give you a better visualization of how this update pattern works for you. Uh, so I have an app, and this is the first time I'm installing the app on the device. Um, so the user goes to install an app. All the files are downloaded and staged on disk. It's the first time, so all the files come down. And then a new application is available in the cloud. Um, the user goes to install it. We look, and we only download the differences that are needed for the application update. We'll then go and link all the existing blocks over on disk. And then when the app is shut down, uh, we'll go and put the new app in place. So it's just a quick change of some uh, registration information in a, light, a SQLite database on the device. Um, and then the user has a new app, and silently in the background, we'll clean up all the files that we don't need, really making it uh, faster, easier, and more reliable for the users to get app updates. So a lot of developers like to know, okay, I'd like to understand more on how this differential update works. Um, and we give you a tool in the Windows 10 SDK to really understand what's happening with our differential update stack. And you can do that through a tool called Compare Package. So I have an example of Compare Package's output here. Um, in, within the Windows operating system, we ship this app called the App Installer app. Uh, so here's an example of when I did an update to it uh, at some time uh, last year. Um, and you can see, we give you a list of files, and there's two key things to look at. There's the impact, which is the amount of change that'll be downloaded over the network. And then there's the, the size change, which shows you the net growth on disk. So while your uh, app might not change a lot in size, you might be making a lot of changes to the code. So this allows you to understand what the real impact is. So you can understand, hey, what are my users gonna download? Or maybe you're even planning for you know, how much uh, network bandwidth is gonna be consumed off my content distribution network when I'm pushing out app updates. And again, this tool is available today in the Windows 10 SDK, um, and you can use this with any two MSIX packages. Uh, the other thing we talked about was how shared files work. And I kinda wanna walk through a quick example here of two apps sharing files and how the deployment stack handles that. First off here, I have a finance MSIX, and in it I have three files. For the sake of simplicity, I just made some generic caches uh, so we understand how the kind of flow works. So now the user is going to install this app, and it's the very first time any of these apps are being installed on the device, so all the files are going to need to be downloaded. Now the user goes to install another app, in this case the supplier MSIX. What you'll see here is there's three files. Uh, one of them shares a hash with the other uh, app package. One just shares a file name, but it has a different hash. In this case, when we go and install the application, we'll notice that, hey, the one with the same hash is the exact same file, but despite the other ones sharing the same file name, it truly is a different and unique file. So we'll go ahead and just download the two files we need, and then we'll create a link over so that app has access to the file, and it doesn't have to re-download it to run, making it really simple and easy uh, to install and minimizing, again, that footprint for your user's device. So let's go and recap uh, app updates in general. So if you're using the Microsoft Store, Windows Update handles everything for you. You don't have to do anything. When you ingest the app into the store, it's just ready to go. If you're distributing from a website, we give you a series of different options you can use. All of this is driven from a file called the App Installer file, and we give you the ability to either configure silent updates or allow you to present UX where the users can go and opt in or out of the update. Uh, likewise, we also give you the ability to downgrade your application. Um, in that rare case where you might have accidentally pushed out a breaking change, you can actually push an update that takes your users backward so they can go to that last known good copy without having to rush an update out while you go and fix any problem that you might have experienced in your application. People ask, how hard is it to get to MSIX? And creating an MSIX in Visual Studio is really easy. We have the Windows app packaging project that's available in Visual Studio. It gives a few key things to make using MSIX really easy. First off, it gives you a manifest editor. I showed you that XML file a few slides ago. Instead of having to go in and manually edit XML, there's a nice lightweight UX that allows you to set a lot of the key properties from within your manifest. We also give you some debugging tools so that you understand how your app is running and you can debug in the lightweight container that MSIX runs. And then lastly, we give you a packaging wizard, making it really easy to output that MSIX package for you. And this is available in Visual Studio 2019. For folks using Azure DevOps, MSIX easily integrates with Azure DevOps. Uh, just use the Windows 2019 hosted build agent in Azure Pipelines, 
and you're ready to go with MSIX. It comes pre-installed with all the MSIX build tools, and you can even use a YAML file to easily configure the package creation and sign your MSIX package. And if you want to learn more about that, we actually even have a sample out on GitHub for you that you can get started with the MSIX uh, in Azure DevOps. And then lastly, MSIX is the deployment technology moving forward. We've done lots of things to make it really easy to adopt and be the technology that developers want to use when deploying to Windows 10X or other Windows devices. Thanks for joining me today.